In this short video, I will show you how to import a data set, which you should already know how to do. We'll symbolize it, and then we'll get on to some advanced environment settings with a refresher of the old environment settings. Of course, I'm going to import into my Plume feature data set. I'm going to choose single. Actually, I might as well choose double, or multiple, I should say because I do not care about what name I end up using for the data set. Four, and I know it's actually correct. Pure space map, I included with your zip this lab because it's a little bit different than the other one. I'm going to say add. It's already going to the right, correct place. I say OK, and it runs. Takes about two seconds, and I close. It does not get added but I can simply go up to my lab 4, data, geodatabase, feature data set, and add pure space map. And there it is. It looks very similar, but it is missing some of the extra things such as the military base, Mount Rainier, and the glaciers. If you'd like to use the glaciers, etc. in your symbolization, feel free to do so, but use a different name as you import it. I'm just going to simply symbolize this quickly by adding all values, turning off the old. In this case, I believe 0 is the water. I'm guessing here. I should have checked, of course, with no border. And then number 1 would be hollow and a 40% border as stated in the directions. We'll see how it looks. Yes, that is what it's supposed to look like. It is now time to set our environment settings and geoprocessing options. First thing I'll do is go to my options and make sure that background processing is turned off and say OK and then go to my geoprocessing environments. Just so you are aware, there is another way to get to that. You click on my or your Arc Toolbox, right click on the Arc Toolbox and go to environments. That's It gets you to the same location, just a different way to do it. For our workspace, we're going to set that to our geodatabase. And I am also going to copy that and put it in my Scratch workspace. In the output coordinates, I'll choose as specified below, or same as layer base map, pure space map, excuse me, and then it comes up properly. We're also going to set our processing extent. same as layer pierce base map so that is all set by doing so the raster data sets will fit the extent of the original point file used to create them which means the edges of your raster will images will not fit pierce county in any meaningful way which is why we set it so there will be a meaningful way of why they're extending to a certain extent. The next setting is down below under raster analysis. We'll scroll down and click raster analysis so that you can see this window. The first of the two settings here is cell size. For cell size we're going to choose as specified below. We'll enter a 50 for the cell size. The cell size of a raster data set can range from a low of a fraction of one to a high of many thousand. By setting a relatively small cell size, we'll be able to conduct analysis for a small area with a reasonable degree of accuracy. And remember, remember that the units that are used to calculate the 
raster cells are determined by the linear unit of the raster's projection. In this assignment, we're using feet. Next, use the drop down menu beneath the mask text field and choose Pierce Base Map as your raster analysis mask. This mask will be used to define the cells within the analysis extent that will be included when running a geoprocessing tool. Essentially, you're telling ArcMap the shape that you'd like for your output raster to conform to. At this point, we are done with our environment settings, so click OK. And we're done with setting our geoprocessing options and environment settings.